One of the things that we really didn't expect when we started to work on some of these extreme viruses were some of the spin-offs that they were likely to have. It turns out that some of the work that we're doing, this is what we call the zombie virus project, might actually have some really amazing implications. Some of the work that uh, people like Dr. Stenman are uh, doing that, that's very useful, they're working in environments that uh, are not very friendly to uh, most of life. It's very helpful if we can be using uh, materials that will withstand the, the harsh environments uh, because then we can use those as means of purifying the, the reagents that we want to inject into people. What we're really interested in doing is looking at how the virus is actually interacting with the cell. And so when the virus comes in and does an infection, what it needs to do is open up its structure, that metastable state, in order to be able to release its genome into this host cell that it gets into and then make more virus particles. So we're really interested in this first step. Viruses kind of get a bad rap. Everybody thinks viruses are bad. Well, it turns out viruses are great. If there weren't viruses on this planet, we wouldn't exist. Some people think that actually it was viruses that invented DNA in the first place. And that is a really fascinating kind of hypothesis to think about. Hi, I'm Ken Stedman from the Center for Life and Extreme Environments at Portland State University. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about The Edge of Life, the film that I'm actually putting together on the amazing universe of viruses and how they fit into it. Um, I'm a biology professor here at Portland State University, and I got really interested in viruses when I was actually working more on biochemistry than actually the viruses themselves. How did I get involved in this project in the first place? The way that I actually got involved was at a holiday party of the Radiation and Medicine Department at Oregon Health Sciences University, where my wife works. And while I was there, I ran into Rod, of all places, in the buffet line, and he noticed this brooch that I was wearing. And we're standing there in line, and there's this guy in front of me, and he looks kind of like a, kind of a haggard, uh, hippie type of a look but he's wearing a, a tweed jacket and he looked like a friendly fellow and I noticed that there was some sort of a, a stick pin or something on his lapel. Which was made by my mother-in-law and it's actually of a virus that I found when I was doing research in Yellowstone National Park and this particular virus is a great example of how you can find really brand new viruses just in looking in some of these extreme environments. And so that was really the connection and how we got started on working on this film, particularly in terms of how viruses really fit into the universe that we know of. They're absolutely amazing numbers of them and they're now being used for basically all gene therapy. The cutting edge of medicine is actually viruses and, and the viruses how you can actually use them to treat diseases like cancer, like AIDS. And so now we're trying to put together this film in order to get that message out, get that message across, how important viruses are for you, for me, for everybody. So, so far we've been able to actually get some great footage based on things that we did in Lassen Volcanic National Park, some stuff that we've done here at Portland State University. There's some great shorts that we have so far, some great clips, you can see them on our website. But we really need to take that next step. We need to move on and collect enough resources to be able to move to make this a whole project, get that project to completion and move it forward. And so that's really where we could use your help. We're really looking forward to working together with you on what I think is this extremely exciting project. We're hoping that this documentary will be able to reach millions and millions of people around the world. And I don't know what else I can babble on about.